Good day, friends. Let's talk today about menopause, and we'll discuss menopause through a metabolic mirror, through an endocrine prism. Now, what is menopause? It's a physiological state, and it's just defined as the cessation of menstruation for 12 months or more. Sometimes a surgical menopause can occur when a woman undergoes hysterectomy. Menopause is physiological, yet many people complain or they critique that menopause has become medicalized. I don't think that's true. As endocrinologists, we have a duty to help each and every individual on earth. And our duty is not just to prevent disease, but it is to promote health. And when we in endocrinology view menopause through an endocrine prism, we actually view menopause as an opportunity for good health. We view it as a reason for optimism. Let's see how this is true. From a metabolic mirror or from an endocrine prism point of view, we can look at the clinical features and the complications, the comorbid conditions of menopause as follows. M is for metabolic. M is for musculoskeletal. M is for mood. And M is also for micturition and local genitourinary complaints. Now, in all these M's, we have to evaluate the patient who is going through menopause. We have to rule out differential diagnosis, most of which are from endocrinology and metabolism. And we have to manage these patients with the best possible endocrine care. Let's look at them one by one. Look at metabolic. At the time of menopause, changes take place in the metabolism. Obesity increases dyslipidemia occurs, diabetes might come up, and cardiovascular disease can occur. This is because the cardioprotective effect of estrogen is lost. Women who have hot flushes, extreme vasomotor symptoms, are at increased risk of cardiovascular disease. This means that when we talk of anginal equivalents, we should not forget hot flashes. Hot flashes should actually be viewed as an anginal equivalent. And the appropriate screening, the appropriate investigations must be done. From an endocrine perspective, we can reduce these estropinic symptoms by providing MHT, menopause hormonal therapy. But we should also screen for obesity, for diabetes, for dyslipidemia, for hypertension. The second M is musculoskeletal. And osteoporosis uh, makes an entry into a woman's life after menopause. So we must remember to screen for bone health. You can use DEXA. If that is not available, you can use the FRAX tool, F-R-A-X FRAX tool. And do remember to be mindful about vitamin D and calcium adequacy. 1200 milligrams of calcium is required per day for every woman after menopause. And this will actually help her musculoskeletal health. The third M is mood. Menopause can be associated with menopause distress, with depression, with other psychological abnormalities. But in such patients, take the opportunity to screen for hypothyroidism and other causes of distress. Once again, Menopause hormone therapy will actually help in alleviating these symptoms. Note that usually it is depressive symptoms. Very rarely will the lady in question fulfill the diagnostic criteria of DSM-5 for major depressive disorders. The fourth M we had titled as micturition, and that reminds us about local genitourinary symptoms. These are because of estropenia, and they must be managed with estrogen. We have various types of MHT available. Now, drugs like didrogestrone that are used are very safe. They are metabolically safe and they will help in management of these symptoms. Remember, whenever using MHT, to be swift, start early, to be smart. Remember that you have to know why you are giving the drug and for how long. So be swift, be smart and give it for a short period of time, the shortest time that is required to alleviate symptoms. 
We can use MHT responsibly up till 10 years after menopause or up till age 60, whichever is earlier. And with the modern MHT that we have available, we can actually improve the quality of life of women who are passing through menopause and beyond. We are endocrinologists and we think in terms of hormones. A prescription will have a paracrine effect. Now, what does that mean to us? When we prescribe, there is a paracrine effect. I am helping the lady who is sitting across the table in my clinic. But when we educate, we have an endocrine effect. When we educate our patients, the public, the world at large, when we educate them about menopause, the need for menopausal management, the need for MHT, menopause hormone therapy, we have an endocrine effect. There are just a few of us in the world, a few endocrinologists. We work hard to help our uh, fellow citizens. But when we educate, we can spread the good word about endocrinology far and wide. So the same way that the pituitary weighing just half a gram influences the metabolism of the entire body, our education, our med buzz can actually influence the health of the entire globe. Let's try to educate our public about menopause and MHT. Let's try to create that endocrine goodness, which is possible through our subject. Thank you.